It's time for our regular scheduled board meeting. Tonight we have a uh, former commissioner from Dixie County, Jason Holyfield, and uh, I've asked him to be mind open us with the invocation and the pledge tonight. You all stand? Let's pray. Dear Lord, we come to you humbly this evening, Lord, and ask for your wisdom and your guidance in everything we do. Ask that you'll, you'll bless Swanee County and give these men wisdom to run our county the way you'd have it run, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, sir. All right, first item on the agenda is approval of minutes from July 2nd, 2019, regular scheduled board meeting. Do I have any changes, corrections, or anything that wishes to be added? <coughs> Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve? Mr. Chairman, motion to approve. A motion to approve by Commissioner Fleming. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Richardson. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, moving on to the consent agenda. We have two through 10. Uh, we're gonna pull item number five for discussion and item 10 for discussion. Any other items wishing to be pulled this time? Hearing none, I need a motion to approve two through four and six through nine. Make a motion. Got a motion by Commissioner Hill. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Stapleton. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, item number five, approval of recommendation regarding ADA compliance. Uh, Mr. Hancock had a question, if you would, Mr. Hancock, to make your way to the podium. Bo Hancock, 6135 Wiggins Road. Just got two questions uh, in here. They're talking about uh, upgrades to the website. Uh, what are those, what do we have to do to upgrade the website? make it compliant with ADA? I'll add the, to answer the question, that the, there is no standard to upgrade it to reach any type of uh, federal standard that they have. But what we've, we are in the process of doing is continuing with our upgrades that we've already started. So they've seen that and we're, we're moving forward. Right. Why was this? Why was the county sued to start with? Uh, I mean, if we weren't complying with something, it's not Swanee County. It's multiple counties across the state and the nation that are being sued by various uh, attorney, attorneys and so-called victims. But it's attorneys, okay. but it's um, <laughs> there's no standard. And there was no guidelines laid out within the federal law that said a a standard of where you needed to be and so there's there's no case law on it there's nothing so right now it's wide open for them but i know that probably wasn't as poetic as you would have put let it let me let me take a shot at it <laughs> law was passed years ago that uh requires something of local governments that cannot be accomplished yeah that's why we were sued so we are working at improving the information that we make available but we can't make it perfect because there isn't a standard. No standard has been established so that you know when you've arrived. Yeah. Well, and the way I understand it, and Mr. Perfect can correct me if I get out of line, state law requires that we put everything on our website, and federal law says you make it where a, a visual scanner can make it available for the seeing impaired, and some of the documents that we have to make available to accomplish state law is not will not work in the in the viewfinder is that pretty accurate among other things okay <laughs> <laughs> right. but whomever sued or firm or whatever the attorneys are happy with the 21,000 uh, actually I got when I've prepared this memo uh, it was 21,000 they are now extremely happy at 15 because we're going to settle it at 15 
Okay. I'm glad I came up here. We wouldn't have known that, would we? Would we? If I hadn't asked this question, y'all, would we know that it wasn't 21,000 and it's just 15,000? Well, it would have been 15. It wouldn't have been 21, whether you knew it or not. I don't mean to be rude about it, but I mean, that's it was my money. And it would have been 15, 6,000 less than what That's was fine the with me. But I would like to know that it's not 21 and it's the 15. All right, well. Well, anyway, how much is the insurance going to pay of that 15? 10. They're going to pay 10? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Thank Chairman, you. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, is, does this uh, settlement um, keep us from being sued in the future for, uh, by anybody else for any other uh, uh, non-compliance of no standards that exist? The answer is no. No. At this point, it settles this case and this case alone. Correct. The good thing is that all of the other communities have the same problem. The pressure is on the federal government now to try to come up with some type of standards or rely on the courts to come up with standards. Yeah, there, there, was, so, there was multiple lawsuits yeah. filed by the same firm across the state at one time. I mean, it's not targeted just at Swanee County. It's multiple counties. Right, any other questions? Do we have a motion to approve? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the settlement with the uh, um, corrections on it that the uh, uh, county attorney has said about $15,000. I got a motion by Commissioner Richardson. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Fleming. Any further discussion? There are none. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, item number 10, <clears throat> ratification of Rural Florida Marketing and Education Grant application. Um, I. It says and to authorize chairman to execute. I just needed to change that wording um, to authorize previous sign, uh, signature of economic director Jimmy Norris. So if we can ratify it with uh, the grant with, with Mr. Norris's signature on it. Any questions? Hear none. Do we have a motion to approve? Motion. I'm sorry, who was that? John. Got a motion by Commissioner Hale. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Stapleton. Any further discussion? Hear none. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right. Next item is time specific at uh, 6 05 p.m. or soon thereafter, as the matter can be heard, hold a public hearing to consider adoption of a resolution approving special permit request number SP 190601 by Innovative Solar. 168 LLC authorized agent of Butler and Butler Family Limited Partnership. Uh, Mr. Meeks, or at this time, uh, if anybody's wishing to speak on behalf of this item, uh, if you would stand so the attorney can swear you in. Yes. All right. If you, if, if you may speak, I mean, whether you do or not, if you think you may speak, you can go ahead and stand. Do each of you swear or affirm that the testimony you'll give before the board this evening will be the truth to so help you God? Thank you. Each time that you do approach the podium, though, if you would identify yourself by name and address <coughs> before you speak. Thank you. All right, Mr. Meeks. Mr. Chairman, board members, the uh, application that you have before you for consideration is special permit number 19-06-01, special exception by Innovative Solar 168 LLC, authorized agent for Butler and Butler Family Limited Partnership. Um, subject site is located on a 236-acre site situated in Section 34, Township 4 South, Range 14 East. It's generally located uh, the intersections of 200th Street, 77th Road, and 192nd Street. Um, currently, the, the, the property is under agricultural um, production at this point, and what the application is proposed to do is install a solar site uh, on the 236-acre parcel. Land development regulations allows utilities and related facilities to be approved by the Board of County Commissioners by special permit. Uh, the proposed use of a solar site falls within this allowable use. 
The attached site plan shows the proposed layout of the solar arrays on the, uh, the property you have in your attachments. Um, I think it's included with a boundary survey. Um, you'll notate on the actual site plan that the proposed site abuts an existing electrical transmission line that cuts across um, the southwest corner of the property. So the, uh, the site would be easily accessible to distribute the power that's collected uh, from the sun. Um, the application and supporting documentation also indicates that there would be two single-story control buildings that would be erected on the property. This would be control, uh, communication, the house communication equipment. Um, the proposed use is consistent with the comprehensive plan of Swanee County and the land development regulations. Uh, you have attached in your information a uh, proposed resolution for adoption. If the board so chooses to approve the request, then the board would, would do so. If there's any conditions that this board so chooses to add, then those would be added as a condition. Um, at this time, I don't have any other information to add. Um, representative from Innovative Solar is present. He has a presentation to give to the board and you'd be able to answer any questions that the board has in regards to the specific site. If you don't have any of me at this time, I would enter the file into the record. All right, I'll take the file in the attached <clears throat> exhibit. It is composite exhibit one. All right. Any of the board have any questions for Mr. Meeks? Hearing none, at this time we'll open the floor to public comment. Anyone wishing to speak, they'd make their way to the podium. Uh, name and address for the record. I'm going to do the presentation. You want him to do the, well, can he do can it this time? Or do it first. They may answer some questions. If you would, you can come on, but we can still be in the public <coughs> comment time. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, Attorney Pravat, uh, good evening. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having our application on your agenda tonight. Uh, my name is Mike Hill. I'm with Innovative Solar Systems, 1095 Hendersonville Road. Asheville, North Carolina, 28806. Um, here tonight on behalf of our project, Innovative Solar 168 LLC, uh, as previously described by Mr. Meeks. And I do have a presentation, uh, and I want to try to get that up and running for you. As Mr. Meek said, um, our use here is a proposed solar farm. I know that there are others in the general area, and so you're probably very familiar with the uh, general concept of a solar farm. I don't want to belabor it, but just uh, a few important points. Um, these solar panels are of the type that generate electricity directly from the sun. Um, our project is not the type of project that uses mirrors to concentrate sunlight, to heat water or another liquid. That is, that is not us. Uh, we use solar panels that uh, generate electricity simply by having the sunlight fall on them. Uh, they generate direct current electricity, uh, which is then converted by equipment on site uh, at the solar farm called inverters uh, that uh, convert the DC electricity into the AC type of electricity that we all have in our homes that are electrical outlets and that power appliances and so on in our homes. Um, the uh, energy generated, of course, will be clean, renewable energy. Uh, and our project is a low impact type of project um, that will benefit, that brings benefits without imposing burdens on the county. We don't need to ask the county to extend any utilities to the site. We don't need water. We don't need sewer. Uh, we're not going to need you to add uh, staff to the sheriff's department. The school district is not going to have to add classrooms or teachers on account of our project. It's a very, very low impact kind of project from the county standpoint, um, but it will generate uh, significant tax revenue. Uh, to help uh, with county, uh, the county budget and the school district budget. 
Uh, just a, a few words about who we are. Um, as I said, we're, we're from, I'm from Asheville. We're based in Asheville, North Carolina. Our company was founded by uh, two brothers, John and Richard Green, who have a combined 50 years of experience in energy projects and construction. Um, we have uh, a number of different departments in our company, um, in addition to the land development department, which is the department that I'm with. Uh, we also have uh, a very skilled engineering department, as well as uh, what we call a power purchase department. Uh, that department, my colleagues there, work with utility companies and large commercial users uh, to sell the power that's generated by our solar farms. We do not sell power directly to retail customers. Then I'm happy to go through those. This particular one that you're seeing right now just shows the panels at a solar farm. This, the construction is not completed at this solar farm. It was undergoing testing at this point. Uh, but it just shows the panels laying in an almost horizontal position on their tracking system as the, the tracking system uh, has them at midday. This was taken just shortly before noontime, this particular picture. So um, with that, I'll um, ask if there are any questions that uh, you have that I can answer. And uh, uh, I'll also be happy uh, if any members of the public have any questions. And uh, I'll be happy to come back to the, the podium to uh, try to address any questions the public may have as well. Oh, right, well, thanks, sir. Mr. Board, Chairman, any questions? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask a, Yes, sir. It was a simple, quick fix, quick question. but. To what impact, if there will be any, would it have on the current solar farm here in Swanee County? On uh, the ex uh, on an existing solar farm, it would have no impact at all on any existing solar farm. No, thanks, Mr. Right, any other questions, uh, Mr. Chairman? I did have a question. Yes, um, sir. It's, it's more of a comment, but hopefully, maybe we can address this thing um, with. In construction, you said your your trucks would be probably coming in through 192nd and over to uh, 77th. Um, that road is in horrendous condition around the church, uh, Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. It, it, it's uh, yes. afraid of, of yes. continual, repeated uh, uh, semis coming in and out of there would just create even more problems with that. Would you be willing to adapt that, uh, adapt the change to that would be just coming in on um, 77th and then turning back on, on to, I'm sorry, coming in on 200th and turning back on 77th. That way to avoid that. The first part of 77th is in pretty good shape. It's yes, just, it is. Right when you get to the church, it just yes. it, deteriorates. It, it, it is. Um, it's in difficult shape there near the church. It's, it's, there are a lot of patches and so on there. None of the roads are in really good condition, but they're... Um, we'll be, as a general statement, let me say that we'll be happy to work with the county to come in to access the site in any way that the county wants us to. If the county would prefer that we come in on 200th, um, I don't see any reason why we couldn't do that. Um, the only reason that I mentioned um, 192nd is because 192nd is paved. Um, if, um, w with regard to the section uh, near the church and, and with regard to uh, 192nd um, in general, um, if you want us to work with the county highway commissioner uh, to um, uh, do a pre-construction, uh, have, have a pre-construction evaluation of the road done uh, and then a post-construction evaluation of the road done and have us do any repairs to the road um, if our trucks were to cause any um, disintegration of the pavement, especially. I, I can certainly appreciate what you're saying about the area near the church in particular. Um, so if that area needs to be redone uh, after construction, then we can certainly do that. We'll work with the county highway commissioner and uh, so make arrangements. Make sure I understand. You're going to be accessing from 129, not from 49. So therefore, you're coming back up 180th, 192nd. Is that, is that correct, or am I, am I off on on these roads here because I'm what? trying to, to figure in if you're coming up 49 then uh, 200th is paved all the way to 49 77th 49 it's all paved it's just uh, it's in better condition than 77th is when I when, uh, when I was out on the site uh, I came in on 200th um, um, from 
Uh, 129. Yes, that's not paved. That's not, that, that 49 portion. 49 it is paved. From 49 it is paved. Um, and I would anticipate that um, if I had the construction folks were by my side here tonight, I think they would probably say that their preference, if the county is agreeable, would be for uh, access to be from 49 uh, paved road uh, over to 192nd paved and then down um, 77th Mount Pisgah. Uh, but again, we would be happy to work with the county on a pre-construction evaluation of the roads and a post-construction evaluation. Uh, and we'll do whatever we can to mitigate any impacts from truck traffic. And that section there by the church, if the trucks have an adverse impact there, then we would work with the highway commissioner to redo that area uh, if necessary. Commissioner Richardson well, is the highway commissioner. Oh, down in that area. <laughs> that's that's kind of what we're getting at here. I see. All right. I, Thank you very I, much. I I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't understand that. that. I'd be amenable to that if you want to pave that street. It'd be great. <laughs> I don't. I don't know that we would pave the whole thing. We would certainly work with you to identify you know areas that are impacted by any truck traffic. So. Thank you. If you're coming from. Uh, He's at least got all the money. Uh, the highways down there. District four. That would be Lynn Stapleton, commissioner of the highway. Uh, over there, so. I can think of a whole list of roads I'd love for you to drive over if you're going to build them back. <laughs> I'm afraid we, pro we probably wouldn't be able to do that, but um, certainly if we if we tear up the road in front of the church there, which is in in difficult shape, then we'd work on that and get it back up to, you know, we'd restore that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I had a couple of questions and comments, but I'd uh, like to let the public speak if you, first, if you don't mind, if that's. Well, we can, you can, we can come back to questions if you have some later. All right, thanks, sir. We're going to open it to public comment. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we'll open it to public comment. Anyone wishing to speak, if you make your way to the podium, name and address for the record. Name is Walter Lowe. I live at 8504 200 Street. Uh, first of all, that project sounds very nice. Uh, my only comment is that I've noticed activity at that site over the last several months. I've also noticed a tremendous increase in traffic on 200th Street. So I assume the two were had something to do with one another. I'm not 100% sure that's the case. We also have Haystack Farms, which is right across the street from where we live. Uh, but I'm guessing that we have at least two to three semi-trailers Monday through Friday that go up and down 200th Street, along with several other large trucks. Uh, that is a, obviously a tremendous inconvenience to the people that live on 200th Street. Uh, when it's dry, you have a uh, tremendous problem with dust and dirt everywhere. And when it's wet, uh, that lime rock is very slick, and that road gets rutted out extremely quickly. Uh, I notice uh, it's been graded. It seems like the grader's there almost once a week or whatever. Uh, I don't know, since the commissioner is here, is there any study being done on 200th Street as far as traffic goes because it's an enormous amount of traffic that's I've noticed the last six months on that road compared to the to the previous year so to speak uh, Mr. Lowe I'll just say that I have asked that you know trying to get this road on the DOT list to, to get it paid but uh, when the DOT is not handing out any more any more money than we got it's it's kind of hard to get a road uh, approved for grant uh, for grant approval well so we are working that is one of my uh, biggest priorities down there is to get that road finished from one side to the other. That would be great. Uh, two comments then. Uh, number one, it only has two speed limit signs of 35 on it. Number two, to slow traffic down, it might be very wise to put a stop sign at 89th Street because that between 129th and 47 or whatever it is, there is no stop signs. And some of these tractor trailers have 
been in excess of 60 miles an hour up and down that road. And it doesn't happen that often that they're going that fast, but they are tearing that road up, to say the least. Mr. Chairman, just real quick, uh, I yes, think sir. that, uh, number one, we, uh, in, in, in the construction, Mr. Lowe, of this, of this solar farm, it's not going to involve any of the, the unpaved roads. So they're going to stay on to the, only the paved part, portions of it. No, I'm not going to affect that. And yeah. I know what you're speaking about with the other business and the and the increased traffic on that road. Unfortunately, this I don't believe this is the the we're, we're even supposed to be talking about that part of it because it's not going to affect it. Am I am I correct? Um, I mean, can't we can't we can't to make not, a, a, anything happen along with this decision to fix that road, conditional or unconditional? Like, we have to stick to just this this project, is what okay. I was told. And I, I asked that question, by the way, it's the only reason why I know that. Why we have become so attractive and desirable to these solar farms that mm -hmm. are, are relocating or wanting to locate here. So, and I don't know long term, he may have mentioned it as well, have we really looked at this in a sense of protecting our county, our citizens, ourselves, long term? keep opening this door. I mean, I'm all for solar too. I'm all for taking your tax money and using it, mm -hmm. you know, back in our community. And we're happy to, we're certainly happy to pay taxes. Uh, I know that question came up um, and we did run just for informational purposes. Uh, we ran just a, a very preliminary rough analysis. Uh, numbers will vary depending on what the actual cost of construction is. And so we would obviously have those numbers. We wouldn't have those numbers until after the construction process is completed. But even with the abatement that is provided by the state, uh, and I think you're all aware that the state um, has enacted legislation that provides for an 80 percent abatement, but even with that abatement, uh, we would just rough estimate of revenue to the county and the school district total combined uh, somewhere probably between 150 and 170 or 75 thousand dollars first year uh, to the uh, county and school district combined. So, um, just so you have that that information, and that's based on uh, recent tax rates um, and an assumption about the proposed cost of construction being in the neighborhood of about 45 million or so. That would be that we anticipate our investment would be somewhere in that neighborhood, about $45 million. Um, we would be, the construction process um, during which the, there would be truck traffic to and from the site um, would be limited in duration, probably about a year, possibly a little bit less, possibly a couple of months more. Um, we would employ as many local folks to work on the project as we can. Uh, we do need to have some specially trained uh, solar uh, electricians, if you will. Um, there may not be uh, a large number of them right here in the county. Uh, if not, then we'll have to bring them in uh, from outside. But uh, during initial site prep and some of the other work uh, that goes on, we would certainly try to utilize uh, uh, as many local contractors and as much local labor as we can. In terms, uh, Commissioner Stapleton, in terms of your, your initial question regarding property value and potential impact on property value, um, there are studies that have been done which show that um, solar farms basically do not have an adverse impact on local property values. Um, and I would also just mention again that uh, the perimeter of this site uh, that would be visible, uh, or excuse me, the, the the, the roads that form the boundary uh, of this site are largely vegetated uh, and we can certainly in the, uh, the sections that I'm aware of where there isn't vegetation right along the road, be happy to provide landscaping there to shield the solar farm from view. Um, there's a lot of mature vegetation that's already there including some tall, many, many tall trees um, and I think it would be largely shielded from view. Um, so from that standpoint, the aesthetic impact, potential visual impact, would certainly be significantly mitigated by uh, the existing vegetation, which we would leave in, 
we would leave that in place. We're not looking to take down any perimeter vegetation or anything. So that would stay in place. Um, so uh, we would certainly uh, be sensitive to that. Uh, and property values have not been adversely uh, impacted by solar farms based on studies that have been done. So I appreciate your comments. Certainly. You're welcome. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, just a quick <coughs> thing. Uh, I know this, this is not an issue over all the other properties. This, this should not be an issue over all the properties except the concern over whether or not the residents, the people who own the properties around us, uh, are concerned about their property values. And none of them, uh, I don't believe any of them are here to, to speak to that at this point. Um, but I will tell you just, just briefly. It hadn't been in the front page of the newspaper yet. No, They'll be here next time. Uh, and and you're, you could be right about that. And I'll, I'll give you that one. But just briefly, let me explain to you this area because it, it literally is about three miles from my backyard. Uh, across the street, we have a very, very large hunting preserve uh, that's got eight foot fences on it. Uh, next door, across the street, 77th Road, we have the Johnson Place. And he's got a big old, he's got a big old yard. He just planted something in the front. Uh, fields, his front fields. I don't know what it was, but it used to be trees. Um, next door, farms. Um, up to 49 farms across the street. Uh, we have a few residents on um, on 73rd Road uh, there, and they've called me and they've asked me about it. At least uh, some of them have, or one of them. I know one of them has, uh, and I, we've talked at length about it. But if we really want to talk about an impact to the property values. Our, and uh, and to the aesthetics of our properties down there, you need to talk about the uh, quarter mile away where we have a, uh, uh, a station that blows off uh, um, uh, gas off of our gas line that is so loud it sounds like a jet engine is in some, everyone's backyard. So this is that property. If there is any place, as far as I'm concerned, that would be a benefit I wouldn't want to put one in, a, in a, a beautiful residential area, but this is flat ground. It's all open. Everything is, is it's all agricultural. And it's a, to me, it's a good fit. Up on the corner, there's a church and a graveyard, a couple of residents across the street. And again, I, I don't, they know that it's coming in. The people across the street know that it's coming in. There's posted signs that, that there's something going on. And so... Um, Again, I, I understand your point of view, Mr. Stapleton, and I, and I, I, can, um, I, I think I can sympathize with it, absolutely sympathize with it, uh, what happens when it goes in the paper. My big concern is no contract yet. Um, and I know that you guys are working on that contract. It's not like FP&L. It's not like uh, Duke when they put theirs in. They, they know they're getting that electricity. So that's, that's all, my only concern. But as far as land use... I think it's a perfect fit for that area. And Commissioner, with regard to the contract question, um, we're kind of in a catch-22 there. In most cases, the utility companies don't want to negotiate contract terms until we have zoning approval. And then once we have zoning approval, they're willing to sit down at the table and start talking with us. So that's what it's going, I mean, that's based on preliminary discussions. So um, assuming that you all are of a mind to approve the project ultimately, then I'm sure we'll be having serious discussions with Duke and we'll get to that point. We've successfully negotiated many contracts with them already previously for our other projects. So. Thank you. Any other questions for him? No, sir, I don't have anything. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I could just make two other brief points. Um, number one, um, the project will be designed um, with local conditions in mind uh, so that the uh, mounting system, the tracking system, and everything will be built uh, to uh, withstand uh, weather conditions in the area. Uh, we do that everywhere uh, we build a solar farm. The other thing that I want to emphasize is that uh, the solar panels themselves are solid state. They're like your telephone, your cell phone in that regard. There's no liquid inside any of these solar panels. We don't heat any liquid up. There's no liquid inside to leak out. If something were to happen and a meteorite was to fall on the solar panels and crush a bunch of them, there's nothing in them that creates any kind of an issue or a problem with respect to the ground 
there's nothing to leach into groundwater, nothing like that. They have tempered glass on the top to withstand impacts. Uh, if they get hit by something, they tend to act, react like a windshield. They'll, they'll crack, uh, but they don't disintegrate, and there's nothing inside to, to leak out or cause any problems with the ground. So just wanted to make those points in closing. Um, Commissioner Stapleton, I've got some information uh, with me about uh, studies that have been done on property values. I'm happy to provide that. Um, that, I mean, with all due respect, that was just one question I had. I mean, uh, there's there's other questions and concerns I have. It's not just that. And, it's, and I'm not sitting here saying I don't want the solar farm. I'm saying us as Swanee County are just getting into this. We're brand new. We have one going in. It's in my district. I'm experiencing some growing pains with it. Not that, not that it's something to stop the project, but mm -hmm. do we as a board need to have an outline of something that we follow when we look at one of these to be approved I mean do we need do we need to have buffers do we need to have an, an actual layout of that we want buffers on this and this is a requirement and if you you know if you're going to access this way uh, I mean there's just a lot of, of little things that's concerns that and Commissioner Richardson uh, my comment about the residents not being here is not that my job when I was elected was to do my best to represent the people. And all I'm doing is coming here and trying to, I represent all the people of Swanee County, not just District 4. And if I got some concerns in my district and I want to bring them up, that's all I'm trying to do. I'm just, I'm just asking for a little time to try to, to try to understand if we're making, if we need to come up with a, a line item of something that we want to see as we move forward with this before we just go to approve it, to just say, because we don't have anything we're just we're coming that we're coming in and we're saying go do it and I mean I can check you out there and show you some growing pains on the one that's happening out there that's, well, that's I get all it. And I apologize if my comments were taken in any way shape or form condescending in any way um, and I I would say mr. chairman I concur with his uh, assessment we do need a standard in this county because we are getting more and more requests for solar I don't disagree but I think under under this current application if you set that standard, I don't think you're able to enact it. And I'll let Mr. Pravat speak to this. Address that just a little different. This is a little different situation. This one is a, a special exception, and this one comes directly to y'all. This is, this is an opportunity for y'all to set some buffer requirements, set some restrictions on how they're going to get in there for this particular project. It's not like the one we had before where it was just, you know, a regular land use um, um, because this is a special permit, you get to have the opportunity to do that. So this would be the, the time to do some of them if you would, if you so desire. Yeah, I, I mean, I want to restate that I, it's not that I don't want a solar farm to come here. I'm not, I'm not trying to say I don't want you to be here. That's not the, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to well, figure out if we need a set of guidelines to where we are Mm -hmm. that we sit down with you and we say, hey, this is what we expect. You know, we, we expect if these roads, if this happens, just what you agreed to a minute ago, that you'd be willing to do that. Mm -hmm. But we need some parameters of something to go by, you know, is kind of what I'm getting at. It's, uh, don't, please don't take it that I just want to run you out of town. That's not it. No, thanks. I didn't, I'm not getting that impression. But, uh, but with, this, with this application here, we can, we can enact those now or when we approve it. If we do so, you can say, um, special condition that you're going to make them do a, a buffer that you're going to make them have a certain access point. We've done that. Uh, I don't know that we've done it with solar farms, like with the Durabi, but, I mean, you know, but we've done it with uh, the rock mines where we make them pave the roads going in. You just add a, a, a special condition to the permit, but I think. But we're saying if we vote on it right now, it's saying it's fine for it to be there on that property. It's well, we're saying that that we're t tonight, and correct me if I'm wrong. Mr. Pravat, but we're looking at the evidence provided on whether or not this is uh, a use for that, we're, that, that it meets all the qualifications for a use that's already allowable on that property. Would that be correct? Well, it's just, it, it's allowable as a special that's really permit. Permit, correct. That's why they're here, and and it's something it, with the electrical use and utility use 
that would be allowable if you grant them a special permit. They couldn't just go do it. That's right, right. Uh, that's why they're but, here. But they also, the proceeding here tonight is an opportunity to, if you're going to have special conditions for the special permit for them to be allowed to do this, this is the time to put those on there. Such as you could add a, a condition uh, to granting the permit that they have a pre-construction uh, meeting to identify the situations that deal with the roads and that they would have the post-construction meeting to identify whatever upgrades need to be made as a result of damage that occurred during the construction. That would be a condition. Or that you would have a condition, too, that they have a buffer going around the property since they're uh, um, panels. Uh, reach a maximum height of 15 feet, uh, you could have them to have to have some type of buffering around there that would cover the 15 feet, whether it be, and then put a condition that if they were going to, but, they have buffering, but that they cannot remove mm -hmm. those trees. I mean, I'm, those that's, are the types That's my of things. problem, though, with, without being able to sit and, and have discussions on it and, and talk about these things. It's kind of just hard to pull them out of the air and, and list 10 items that I want to be on that and say, okay, let's go with it. You see what I'm saying? I mean, that's the... Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. So, because that, that was one of the, the last thing I wrote down was should we have a workshop in order to discuss and have time to research and create some stipulations and regulations just for solar farms, what would be, I mean, I know this was a time since the matter tonight. I mean, can we put it off and have, I hate to, you, for them whatever, to. Be, whatever you, they are here. Yes. You can't put it off to then enact different things, have a workshop and enact different things for them to have to comply with in addition. Just have They're to do here. it right now. They're here. No, it is not to say that uh, you have to complete the meeting. You can table this matter and come back at another time, which the next meeting, um, we have enough time to be the when is first meeting in August. You'd have to re-advertise. Yeah. What's when's the first meeting in August? First meeting in August. Sixth. No, but I'm just saying, how much Six. time do we have to get there? It's the sixth. When is the days? I don't know. I don't have my calendar with me. August, August sixth. The sixth. Anyway. Okay. I mean, you can table it, you know, to go to that. Thank you. You can table it to go to that. You know, to go to. I think that you time. would be continuing the hearing, is what Correct. you would be doing. You don't have anything to table right now. I mean, moving to continue the public hearing until that time. On what date? Well, the next available time would be the 6th, 6th. Of, of August. This would be the first meeting next month. Would that be an evening meeting? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I do have one more question. I apologize. I, I one more that I failed to remember. Um, are there any generators that are going to be uh, running on a regular basis? Uh, any noise that's going to be created? Um, uh, our other solar farms are stationary solar farms, so uh, they're stationary solar panels. Um, I, I know these things turn on very, very slow engine uh, motors, and, and they do. they're really geared geared down. But they are. But my question is: is is there are there any other is there any other machinery going to be on? Um, uh, on the property that's going to create sound? Uh, typically with solar farms, uh, the sound producing component of a solar farm uh, is the inverter units. Uh, there will be six or seven of them uh, located within the solar field uh, of our proposed solar farm. They emit a low hum that you can hear if you're standing next to them or if you're within 50 feet, maybe 100 feet, um, they're not going to be audible uh, outside the perimeter of the solar farm. Uh, so unless you're inside the fence within the solar farm, you're, you're not going to hear them. 
Um, you mentioned generators. Uh, there will be some, there will be uh, probably a backup electrical generator uh, associated with the control buildings, uh, but that would just be for backup function in case of a power outage. Um, it would not be running under normal circumstances. Realize that probably sounds rather ironic to talk about a power outage at a solar <laughs> farm, but um, uh, so no, the uh, there there really isn't any of a 15 foot setback on the sides and rear. So around the rest of the perimeter of the solar farm, we're showing a 15 foot setback. Um, and again, we would leave all of the perimeter uh, trees and um, other vegetation around the perimeter in place. We would just be working on the site interiorly uh, so that all the existing uh, vegetation, trees, and so on would remain. I got a question for you. On your sites that you've done or that you're working on or you've done previously, when you access, like if you come off the, the paved road and you access the property and you go to the individual stations that you got throughout the property, the, I forget yeah. what you called them there. The, the inverters? Uh, what type of roadway did, do you have to those? Is it lime rock? Is it paved? Is it? Uh, typically, we just dirt. Basically, we d just leave it as dirt, um, unless the county engineer, for whatever reason, tells us, or county um, fire rescue tell us that they want a different surface uh, inside. Typically, those are just left native surface. I got you. Uh, I just, I, I've got a couple questions, but it, it's, it's related to the lease. But I'm not asking you for details on sure. this particular mm -hmm. lease, but. You know, typically, how long are your leases for? Thirty years, twenty years? The leases are uh, twenty-year leases, and they uh, have uh, typically have four five-year renewal options, so that they could go for a total of forty years. The panel life, the solar panels, typically have a life of about thirty, between thirty and thirty-five years or so, um, and they may get upgraded if more efficient panel technology develops, if panels become more productive. Um, and if the economics work, we may upgrade the panels, uh, but 30, around 30 to 35 years. So our leases um, will go for as long as 40 years. Uh, but at the end of that time, uh, if the property owners, as I mentioned before, if for any reason they, they don't want to continue, then all the equipment can come off and the property can uh, go back to agriculture or whatever other use the property owners want to make of it. So. And on the, on the leases, y'all, it's a per acre lease for a dollar amount, or is it just a lot? It's a dollar amount per acre per year. Mm -hmm. Per year, and y'all pay, pay on them once a year? Uh, no, we pay on a, pay, the uh, rent is paid, uh, at least the way the, the leases are typically set up, the rent's paid on a monthly basis to the property owner. On a monthly basis. Right. And that, that's all I'm getting, my point is, is that it's local, local people that's farming, making mm -hmm. a, looking for another way to make a living off of their property. Um, yeah, that, and this is just another avenue for them. We, we oftentimes hear from farmers, because in, mo in most cases, we wind up not using the full amount of acreage. And the Butler family has uh, other acreage. Um, but many families um, will do a, want to do a solar farm on part of the property to generate revenue from that portion of the property to support agricultural activities on the remainder of their property. So uh, they find it um, very helpful from that standpoint. Uh, and, and that was my point, that it's a monthly or, monthly or yearly revenue to a local farm on top of mm -hmm. the, whatever tax revenue it brings in. I'm, I'm uh, all in favor of trying to help the residents. I don't want to hinder their way to make a living whatsoever. Right. I just, to the to the public and to the landowners that's there and maybe in the future. I mean, uh, I myself, I don't want to look at a six foot chain link fence with probably another 18 inches of barbed wire on top of it. That's just me. But everybody, you know, everybody's different. But I'm just saying, if I live across the street from that, that's why I'm talking about and buffers and setbacks and, and different sure. things that will address that. I understand that. But this is why I'm trying to, under to talk about some parameters of what we do. Sure. Because every one of them needs to be fenced. I understand that. Uh, that. Yeah, that's a requirement of the electrical code that governs these. But um, with the existing trees and other vegetation that's in place, and if, as I said, if there are any bare spots where you want us to fill in, we'll be happy to fill those in. 
um, the the fence um, and the wire on top and so forth is basically not going to be visible behind the existing vegetation. Well, and that's for this. That's for your right for your uh, project. What I'm saying. But I understand you've got larger. I'm, the one I'm on, it's a mile of paved road and it's a fence, mm -hmm. like a prison. So. Yep. It's uh, it's some, it's like we've already crossed this bridge, and now I can't do anything to yeah. try to help. Well, no, once you go across it, you can't right. go back. So you have to get it while you're here. That's mm -hmm. that's why I'm that's why I'm just expressing my concerns. Right. What I'm the growing pains I'm going through out there. I, I just want the board and, to be able. And aware each of that. application is is taken on its own merit. So what you do for this one, you don't have to necessarily make the next one. Do if we make him do a buffer. And the next one has a natural buffer or is in a place where and you I mean, don't it deem be, You know, the next one could be off up, off the paved road where it's a half a mile of cross private property to get to the center of it and it's surrounded and you don't see anything. Right. So I understand mm -hmm. what you're saying with that, absolutely. Uh, right. I, no, I, I fully agree that we need to have further discussion on, uh, on, on moving forward. But uh, me personally on this particular project, knowing where it's at and having been out there, I'm this location with the buffer and uh, them following the whatever way we want them to go in and any other conditions that y'all want to put on it I, i'm fine with it i also want to respect y'all's need though to do further research on it and you know i i'm not going to argue on that if y'all want more time then so be it we can push it off to the next board meeting but i'm i'm good with it tonight if y'all so choose to to want to move forward with it tonight the biggest thing on the buffer mr chairman that i that, that i just think about is is on 200th street um there's there is no buffer along 200th street at this at this current time there's there's not enough trees uh they've taken pretty much all of them out of, up to the um up to that uh, uh power line uh the transmission lines and so um that would be one that I would be concerned about making sure that there's an extra buffer put in there. But uh, uh, as far as the rest of it's concerned, there may be trees that are there that are that are higher in their foliage. Um, I, that's that's a, one of the things that I'd have to go back and look at. Well, the that's project. that's that's all I'm asking. I'm, I'm just asking. I, if I we don't could, have a problem with it either. If we, it. you know, I mean, spend a little more time visit. I'm fine with what Mr. Gamble said about you know each site specific to itself, but. I just feel like we need to you don't you don't make a deal after you've already I mean you don't come back and ask them hey I'd like to put this here and, and do this and uh, expect them to do it because at that point in time they're just going you're going to do in good faith what you you know it's, it's not necessarily that everybody's going to always do the right thing and I'm not saying that's that's your case I'm just saying uh, and I, I should add, we have no objection to any reasonable conditions. We're happy to talk with you about if there's additional buffering uh, that's needed, uh, vegetative screening, buffering, and so forth. Um, if you have, you know, if there's something about the access route or the access gates or any, anything like that, um, you know, we're uh, the. Uh, uh, earlier discussion about uh, repaving that area near the church if the truck traffic damages it for again that certainly we're fine with the condition with regard to that that's all fine with us I, obviously my biggest concern is the, the damage to our existing uh, infrastructure out there from the from the additional traffic out there and I know you're gonna be bringing in uh, truckloads of uh, equipment and stuff mm -hmm. like that so um, but, yeah but, but on that I'm fine with the pre-meeting and the post-meeting as long as it's a independent uh, person taking a look at it I no offense but I don't want y'all's guy on y'all's payroll to be the one looking at it no sure I we fully would expect that Commissioner Richardson and and if you have anybody else at the at the county that you work with I mean we're, we're happy to work with any of the folks from the county or a consulting engineer if you have a consulting engineer all right um one more thing on 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 your on your on your barrier on your border mm -hmm. what is for this area what are y'all proposing are we are we talking potted plants six foot high or six inches high that we got to wait this is what mr. Bravat was talking about the board establishes the minimum height that needs to be maintained on the site well that's, that's what I'm, I'm asking what they're proposing when he says a border 
Well, um, we are open to whatever you tell us is within reason, I, I should say, but whatever is um, appropriate to the area in terms of the type of uh, vegetative screening. And again, mo a, a great deal of the perimeter is, is already screened with trees and, and fairly thick, lush vegetation. So we would keep all that. So it would be filling in um, along, I think Commissioner Richardson mentioned 200th Street, if there's open areas down there along 200th. Um, uh, perhaps in the area where the substation would be um, and where the existing high voltage electric lines are. I think there is an open stretch along there, so you may want some vegetative screening along there. Um, whatever the types of uh, plantings, uh, and we would not start off with something, um, you know, very short. We realize what we probably can't put in a full 15 height, 15 foot high, you know, mature tree, but we could probably find something that would be three, four inch diameter. I don't know how tall that would make it, but um, you know, we would work with local nurseries um, to find, uh, to comply with whatever uh, plantings you direct for appropriate uh, screening that would eventually mature. I mean, it, it might not be the first year that it's full height. Uh, it might take a couple of years before it's, uh, you get a full screen, but um, we'll certainly work with you on um, whatever your requirements are as far as that's concerned. As long as it's not cedars. No cedars? Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just... Okay. Right. Any other questions for, for this gentleman? If not, we'll continue with public comment. Mr. John, you got something for us? Thank you. Be sworn in. Were you sworn in earlier? I guess not. Mr. Pat, we swear him in. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you given before the board this evening would be the truth? So I hope you got I affirm and attest that what I say is the truth. John Koch, 180 ninth Road. Gentlemen, Commissioner Stapleton, Mr. Chairman, you are bringing up a problem that I tried to tell the Commission nearly 40 years ago about land uses and farms and the different things. And we chose to go down to a quarter, two acre, and five acre lots anywhere in this county. And it has presented the problem you are now facing. You now have an opportunity to correct some of those mistakes of nearly 40 years ago with other projects. In this case, you have the ability to tell this company what they need to do to put it in. And as a neighbor and as a person who believes and lives with solar power, I understand, I know what's going in there. And I would like to have it as a neighbor because then nobody else is going to go in there. <laughs> the other thing is, is that the land use of where this is going, remember, it is a solar farm. And that's basically what surrounds it. Residential use is held to a minimum by some people who are rather affluent and can afford airplanes. The subdivisions and the crisis that was created 40 years ago does not begin until you move closer to uh, 72nd, uh, 77th, 77th is, and as you are moving west towards 129. Then you start moving into subdivided lands, five acres or less residential use. Now there are still some large agricultural operations that are mixed in with that area which is buffering the high agricultural use for this particular project. You have the ability for this project to set, you will fix the roads, you will put a buffer, and I would like to add, gee, what are we going to put there? I refer you to Institute of Food and Agricultural Science and the Master Gardeners program, which can tell you which plants, which native plants would grow the best, grow the quickest, and would fit in with our environment and not be invasive. I understand about cedars, you need to spread them far apart and wide so that they can become cedars 
and then you need to put something in between, like a Florida holly or something like that. So what you do is you have a high canopy, a mid canopy, and a low canopy. You can also require them to put their fence not on the public right-of-way facing, but on inside of the property with the barbed wire going over so that anybody who really wants to get in is going to have to go through that buffer as well as the fence. So you're giving them more security if you were to do that. As far as power inside the thing, I'm surprised that they have not looked into some kind of an inverter battery system so that some of the solar power is siphoned off to meet those temporary needs that this farm would have and can be done and the noise is minimal. You can't hear it. This would be the third solar farm in this, in, in, in this county. And I, I, too, don't understand why they want to come here, but it all will go into Duke Energy, which feeds all of the grid. Duke doesn't just serve this group or this group. It all goes into a common grid. How they divide it up beyond that, I'm not quite sure. But it's all one grid. So you could technically receive power from New York because of our aged, antiquated system. The only other thing is, is that I want to say is, is please vote for this particular project and put the conditions that you need to make yourself satisfied and to satisfy your questions. And then, Mr. Stapleton, yes, Mr. Hale, you know, yes, yes, Ronnie, Mr. Richardson, have a workshop again to see if we can clean up some of the mistakes that were made in the late 70s to 1992 to allow we we have if every one of the the, the lots were filled in Swanee County today we'd have a population approaching of a hundred thousand easily and more cars and more things than you'd ever want to know of and the fifth district is a highly populated area for residential development than any one of the four counties four districts combined. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Hearing none, at this time we'll close public comment. All right. That's a board discussion. What's... Mr. Chairman, I just... I hate this because I feel like that... that Landowners ought to have a reasonable expectation that they can do with their land something that's reasonable to the county. This seems very reasonable um, in that it's a, it's acceptable use. It's it's just we're just determining whether or not we're going to let them lease their land to a company no, who's going to provide solar. By doing, the way, and let me we're not doing that. We're not. Oh, well, hang on, hang well, on. Let me finish. I don't mean to interrupt you. Let him finish, finish his sir. thought, then I'll give you the floor. Uh, I hear enough people who, I, I'm very protective of our agriculture as well, but I hear enough people who've moved into the county who gripe about the dust, gripe about the water quality get, uh, getting worse, gripe about this, gripe about that with the major, uh, larger agricultural producers. This is not going to produce any problems. This is a stable uh, uh, system that's going to be there for a long time. It's going to produce income at a regular basis. It's going to produce income for the, the property owners. It's going to uh, produce taxable income for the county. And yes, we need to have some sort of standards or at least expectations where we want to go, but we definitely need to remember that we give our farmers the right to do with their land what's reasonable. And this is, to me, very, very reasonable, especially given the area. Mr. Stapleton? I, I just wanted to say we're not, I was, wasn't ever proposing that we was going to tell them they couldn't do that with their land. We're, I just want perimeters of what we expect when they do it is in case I misspoke. No, I wasn't referring to what you said. I think I was referring to the general conversation uh, as to where we're going with it. Uh, any other discussion amongst the board? I do believe that we need to uh, we need to push this off to uh, table this for one more meeting. All right. I think so it satisfy all of the needs. You're uh, going to continue the public hearing. That's what I mean. Be that 
So is that, um, do we need a motion for that? Yes, sir. All right. I move that we continue the public hearing to August 6th. I got a motion by Commissioner Richardson to continue the public hearing. The second. Arm August 6th. I had a second by, was that Mr. Stapleton? Commissioner Stapleton. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I just have a question. It, it may help the applicant. Um, if you ask them to go ahead and prepare a plan that responds to the concerns that they've heard expressed here and get that submitted so that you've got an opportunity to evaluate that before you get into your next meeting. Yeah, I would like to give them, I mean, you, there may be more direction y'all want to give them at the next meeting, but if y'all know exactly or some ideas now, I'd like for you to give them to them now so they can come prepared. I would prepare for a buffer, make sure that we have plenty of buffer all the way around, but uh, I'd like to hear some recommendations from those who are who are uh, uh, in the extension office who could help out with that. It's free advice, <clears throat> or it's advice we pay for already. My, my point, though, was that if the applicant turns something in to you, you've got a copy of it before you meet. Yeah, we want to see something. I mean, absolutely. He can, he can pretty much take what you've heard here tonight and bring back your plan exactly to meet the, the concerns of the board that you've heard. So that we, and, but submit it to us before then so they can have it in their backup packet. That's pretty much what you're saying, correct? Yeah. I right, got a motion. Well, otherwise, on the, we just start the whole conversation. Correct. Zero. Yeah. All right, we've got a motion by Commissioner Richardson, second by Commissioner Stapleton. Any further discussion? I hear none. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Right. At this time, we'll close. No, we will not. We will postpone it. <laughs> okay. About did it. All right. Is it hot in here or is that just me? It's warm. A little warm. I'm turning it up. Doing all it'll do. All right. Moving on to item 12, uh, constitutional officers item, set date, time, and location for tentative and final budget hearings. Uh, Mr. Honorable Barry Baker, clerk of court. Mr. Chairman, it's, uh, it's, it's time to set the uh, it's a tentative and final uh, budget hearings. Uh, it's a school board final budget hearing date is Thursday, September 5th at 5.30. And if the board is not able to take and have their meeting, it's the same date as the school board. The tentative budget hearing must be held between September 3rd and September 18th after 5 p.m. in the afternoon. If the board must advertise the final public hearing within 15 days of the tentative budget hearing uh, by September 18th if the tentative budget hearing is held on September 3rd. Uh, the, ads, the, is the ads must be submitted to the Swanee Democrat two days in advance of the advertisement running. Uh, the final hearing must be held two to five days after the ad appears in the Swanee Democrat. Uh, and so if, if you look after the budget hearings in 2018, the, the newspaper has now gone to, to where it just has one uh, issue per week. So, so it's where we have to be very cautious of our of our timing all that being said uh, it's based upon the timeline the following dates are best assuming the school board hearing is on September 5th which which they have confirmed with us the tentative budget hearing if we could have it uh, Tuesday September 3rd at 5 30 uh, it, it would allow us to take and submit the ad for the final hearing by, by Monday uh, September 9th the final uh, hearing and uh, ad, the final hearing ad is published on Wednesday, the September 11th. The final budget hearing uh, it could be Monday, September 16th at 5:30. It's where we were trying to move it to, to where it would be on on that Tuesday, but it would fall out out of the timeline. So if we could have it, uh, it's the final uh, September 16th at 5:30, and the tentative would be September 3rd at 5:30. I'm good with those. Everyone else? I just need a motion to approve it. Do I have a motion? Got a motion by Commissioner Richardson. Do I have a second? Second. 
Oh, who am I going to pick? Uh, Mr. Fleming. Got a second by Commissioner Fleming. Good. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay, all that being said, it's where that, that, that Keith and Nina and, and some of the other finance staff that have worked very hard in getting your books ready. So it's where that they are here in the back of the room. At the end of the meeting tonight, if y'all get with me, I'll, I'll make sure that you have them. If y'all have any questions, you can get with, with Nina and Keith. It's where that they can go over those with you. If you need us to schedule you some time, if you want to do that, our staff would be glad to take and accommodate all I'll say is that it doesn't feel like we should be already at the point of the year where we're picking up our budget books. I understand. It's, it's a thing I, I would like to thank again uh, all the different departments, uh, Mr. Harris's departments, and uh, it's Greg and uh, uh, Jamie and Catherine and all the others. It's where, where that, that, that they did a great job in working alongside of us as well as, as well as the other constitutional officers. And so. Uh, all that being said, we have everything here. If you have any questions, you, you can get with I, I don't have any for you. Do you all have any questions for Mr. Baker? No, I don't. No, I'm good. Thank you, sir. If you will, please don't leave tonight before I say so I can give you your book. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Item 13, presentation by, well, I'm going to let Jimmy Norris introduce everybody. We got our economic director, Jimmy Norris. Good afternoon, uh, or evening, or night, or um, anyway, it's good to be here. Um, you know, Victor was going to do a presentation, but I told him we'd be at the Brown Lantern for some wings by 7.30, so uh, <laughs> I don't know if he's still interested or not. He's six minutes uh, late. <laughs> but uh, I do, I do want to uh, take a minute to, uh, to introduce Victor Leota. Uh, he's been working on the Strategic Sites Inventory Program for us. He did the initial program, and... and um, when I first came into this position, it was kind of already underway, and, and of course, uh, Shannon here had a big part of that, and he's worked between the three of us. We we're in communication every single week, and uh, Victor's going to kind of show you what he's been working on, and uh, please, if you have questions, I mean, he's not bashful. He'll answer anything that you have, but, but we're trying to identif identify properties that we can go out and market to the world to bring people here, and... Um, Believe it or not, we just don't need solar farms. Obviously, we need manufacturing and we need logistic centers and a lot of other things. So I've got a whole list of stuff here, but I know we're running long. So uh, I'm going to bring uh, Victor up, and uh, he's going to do a presentation for you. Welcome. Jimmy. I've got a 52-minute presentation. No, just, just kidding. It was. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. I'm going to allow y'all to ask some questions as I go through this. If you have any, please don't wait till the end. Uh, I can answer questions as you go through this. Uh, and also, I know that Mr. Jimmy Norris, being uh, not only familiar with this project, but very much familiar with land development and understanding what it constitutes to make a good site for an economic development use, can help answer those questions too. Um, my name is Victor Leota. My firm is Leota Location and Design. As a way of background, my uh, consulting experience is in site selection for commercial and industrial project manufacturing projects. Um, I've done that for many years, my home state of Louisiana. And the one thing that we learn more than anything else is that it doesn't matter how great a workforce you have, the business climate, tax incentives, infrastructure, um, if you don't have the right piece of dirt, none of it matters. And many of the times we have communities that have sites that are being listed on the market because it's the landowner's volition to sell his or her property. And it may be a sizable piece of uh, uh, acreage, but at the same time, that property may have problems with uh, environmental concerns, wetlands, poor soil conditions, flood risk. And so they get marketed often for sites or, or as sites for economic development projects because it's really the only property the community has to work with. So our years of, of site selection experience, we learned all the nuances about what it takes to make a manufacturing project work in, from a location perspective. And we took that and we created what's called the Strategic Sites Inventory Program, or SSI. And really the whole intent of that is instead of waiting on a prospect to come knocking in a community with a potential project, we want to look in the backyard of that community and find all those real estate assets that we consider to be competitive or quality real estate asset for an economic development project, put, 
filtered those properties through an engineering and environmental screening process and, and landowner engagement. Not every property owner certainly is interested in putting their property on the market. But if we can do this in advance and help communities create an inventory of a known quality of good real estate assets, it's going to largely increase their competitiveness for good job producing projects. At the end of the day, this is about not just creating jobs, but quality jobs. So that's the, that's the intent of the, the Strategic Sites Inventory Program. And I'll go through, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move through this, these slides quickly. Um, and ultimately, I'm not intending tonight to get in the weeds on the findings of sites that we evaluated, so much as to give you an overview. And ultimately, that information is available if you wanted to dig deeper into what we found. Uh, the long and short of it is, is that Suwannee County has some very good assets, some good real estate assets, uh, in conjunction with the infrastructure, transportation infrastructure, and otherwise, as well as workforce and, and, and Ultimately, we think that these sites could be well positioned to attract some quality projects uh, to, the, to the county. Uh, the purpose and benefits, uh, the strategic sites program, program phases, uh, our SSI phase two definition, what we found here in Suwannee County and some next steps uh, is the overview here. I'll, I'll, again, I'll move through this quickly. Um, increasing community competitiveness for economic quality economic development projects by strengthening the quality of the real estate assets is the intent, as I mentioned, of the program. If you look at this map, it's hard to see uh, on the monitors here. These represent points across the, the region. This is the North Florida Economic Development Partnership, which constitutes 14 member counties in North Florida. Uh, Mr. Jeff Henry is here. Jeff is executive director that runs NFEDP, and they work very, very hard to help promote North Florida and its member counties to bring in quality projects to create jobs. And ultimately, through our initial phase of the program, we identified uh, many sites that we think on face value have good characteristics for an economic development use through what we call SSI phase one. That's the discovery process where we look for property. What we're here to talk about tonight is phase two. That's a, a desktop engineering and environmental uh, assessment of uh, really a deep dive into the, the quality of these sites as it relates to engineering and environmental concerns. There are four properties in Suwannee County that we looked at, which is what we are talking about here tonight. And you can see, well, I say it is difficult. Um, you've got you know, 15 sites in the region that have gone through phase two. And it was uh, Suwannee County uh, ultimately applied for a grant with the Department of Economic Opportunity to have funding in place to have four sites go through that process. These are the sites that we found across Suwannee <coughs> County through the initial effort. Uh, just to put that into context, these are larger sites that would serve for a, a larger manufacturing project. I think we went down uh, initially to around 100 acres and in some cases around 50 acres or so. So not every site that's suitable would be included because there are smaller acreages. Geographically, we've got four sites that were, were identified as, as a perceived higher value for an economic development project in Suwannee County, and those sites happen to already have been known to be available uh, on the market. And working with, uh, locally with the local officials and the landowners to determine that these of the mix of sites that we had in Suwannee County, these seem to be the most suitable to push forward through the process of engineering and environmental due diligence. Again, it's hard to see, but we've got intersection of US 90 on your side, and on highway, US highway 129, close to I-10, uh, there are a couple of sites there as well. Two sites were indicated as a uh, potential for an intermodal logistics center. Essentially, that is an FDOT program that identifies real estate assets that could be used to have both multi-modes of transportation from say truck traffic, uh, truck transportation and rail. And there's some, some definitions that if you meet those criteria under the FDOT program, then potentially it would help uh, elevate those sites uh, maybe a little closer to the head of the line for funding projects. Now, that doesn't guarantee anything. However, the program is in place through FDOT and these two sites were evaluated uh, and met, at least in our opinion, the general qualifications for an ILC through the FDOT program. 
as I mentioned, our program phases. Site one, uh, phase one is site discovery. That's the, the, the identification of potential sites that would serve to create jobs through an economic development uh, attraction and investment. Phase two is what we're talking about today, preliminary due diligence. It's not boots on the ground yet, but it's a deep dive into all the GIS data, all the information that we use to determine whether a site uh, can, we can back up the competitive claims of that site. Um, the, the third phase, which is sometimes already known in this case, landowner engagement, to ensure that those properties are indeed available and at a reasonable or fair market value price. That's a whole other component of being competitive is pricing. We don't get involved in that. That happens locally. Phase four, if it warrants phase four, is boots on the ground. That's where a phase one environmental site assessment, phase one cultural, geotechnical study, things that would help to further the, 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 uh, the detail of information to back up those competitive claims and produce those in reports with engineering and, and environmental consultants. We don't perform that work, and if sites advance to that point, we typically look to local firms to help provide those levels of study. Phase five, branding and marketing chronologically isn't necessarily last, but you've got to create the tools and the resources and materials necessary once you've identified high value real estate assets for economic development it doesn't do any good if the world doesn't know about it. We want to make sure that you can promote that and go not just wait for the doorbell to ring, the phone to ring, or somebody to come looking for a project in Swanee County. To ha give the tools for someone like uh, Jimmy Norris to be able to go out and pro proactively promote Swanee County with this information uh, to help back up, again, the fact that you've got good competitive sites here in Swanee County. When we talk about phase two, this is where we look at an engineering and environmental uh, desktop review to expose any fatal flaws, anything that would rise to the level of killing a project, um, something that would create an, 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 a, a burden beyond uh, mitigation with respect to maybe wetlands, for example, or a flood prone issue or a sensitive cultural issue. A big part of what we look at in our screening process is not just how well a company can operate on that site. It's a balance between being uh, protective uh, of environmental conditions and concerns. Um, the cultural aspect of what it means for a site to be located in a community, how well is that a fit? How does it affect the current surrounding land use? Is there compatibility there? There's a, a many factors that go into why we suggest that a particular piece of dirt is a good location for a manufacturing project. Those things are all taken in aggregate into consideration. And so we just want to dig deeper and make sure that we don't have something that comes up that would, that would ultimately render a site less than competitive or altogether rule it out. The last piece is a rough order of magnitude cost. We just make a, uh, a general determination of what it would take to prepare that site for development through grading, uh, site prep, bringing in uh, road improvements and or utility extension or infrastructure access into the site just to give a sense of, of what kind of cost it would look at because, yes, you do have some good pieces of dirt, but if it's going to cost $80 million to bring in all the infrastructure into a piece of property, it's highly likely it's not going to ever land a project. So we want to get a sense of what that looks like. Some of the things that we look at on the engineering front, flood risk, of course, uh, slope, terrain, uh, soil conditions. We look at the access to your, your key transportation infrastructure. Are there impedances? A good example of that is having uh, road and rail access into a site that's compatible to get either you have an existing crossing Rail companies aren't going to, you know, very easily put in new rail crossings even though you have access along a certain part of a site. These are all things that go into the determination of suitability. On the environmental front, it's not just uh, about wetlands but potential threatened and endangered species. We certainly don't want to have impacts there. There's stewardship components to that. There's also just practical time and money from permitting that we want to avoid as well. Um, and then at the end of the day, we're just trying to make an informed decision. Do these sites warrant moving forward or advancing? Do you, we don't want to spend time with a landowner or invest money in a piece of dirt that ultimately is going to have a fail point somewhere. So by going through this phase two study, we can quantify that. We can have a reasonable certainty that we're looking at a good piece of real estate uh, or not. And maybe in some cases, we decide to shelve that site based on the findings. Uh, the idea also is that we should have a better chance of these sites surviving formal due diligence because of this upfront work that's been done that suggests how well a site is going to survive when you go to scrutiny of boots on the ground. And lastly, that, that this information, even though it doesn't necessarily include the more formal due diligence, it is more than ample information to respond to a request for information when a company or a prospect comes looking and begins to inquire about properties or locations for projects in Suwannee County. This information is very detailed. 
And uh, it goes a long way to answering those questions, but again, backing up the competitive claims of these properties. As far as funding, I mentioned North Florida Economic Development Partnership. NFEDP has led the charge in North Florida, really in the state, uh, starting with a Duke Energy grant um, and uh, back in, going back to 2014. Um, they have uh, gone out successfully and secured EDA grants through the federal government that have had match money. Suwannee County has been included in those studies because their membership in NFEDP. Enterprise Florida uh, has continued their support uh, with, with both uh, time and money to advance the program mainly for site discovery. Suwannee County, again, included in that. And then most re recently, DEO. DEO, as I mentioned, funded through a technical assistance grant the four sites that we pushed through the, the phase two study. These numbers won't necessarily mean anything to you. We have two sites that are rail served, two sites that are not uh, of the four that were selected through the process. We have in the report, this constitutes, um, I'll describe it, it's, a, it's basically a report card of, of a of a 30-page report with another series of 25, you know, 10 to 20 maps, and then appendices that constitute some 300 pages of documents, we distill all that down to a simple grade point average. So we go through a series of, of we quantify things in buckets, the condition of the site, what are the physical parameters, the physical criteria, what's the slope, the elevation, the land cover, surrounding land use. We look at connectivity for things like transportation access points, uh, how well are those roads to maintain truck traffic, both for construction and operation? Are there competing traffic that may not be too compatible in that location? Like uh, schools, for example, maybe not next door, but, but not mixing school bus traffic with heavy uh, industrial traffic. Um, connectivity to workforce. Uh, then we look at the community itself. We want to make sure that there's a fit, there's not incompatible land uses, there's not cultural sensitivities or other things. We don't have all the answers. There's a lot that each community is unique. Swanee County has its own unique cultural uh, uh, attributes and concerns. But at the end of the day, all of these things get smashed up together to get a composite and a Jeep that just translates into a 4.0 grade scale. And that's how we ultimately rank the site. The first site, 280-acre uh, site. Now, important to note is that we don't claim that this is a 280 site for a project. We have to look at what are the buildable acres inside of that that are contiguous acres where we avoid most of the wetlands, most of the flood risk, most of the other conditions that we need, but also uh, that is proximate to those, those assets for transportation and utilities. Uh, in this particular case, the site was a, a client and to ultimately with uh, uh, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Norris, and then their staff just collectively within the parish, uh, the county, looking at how well does this site serve an economic development interest in Suwannee County. Well, this was the first site that they they ultimately ranked in that regard, and it has a competitive score, in our opinion, of a 3.5 out of a possible 4.0. The second site, um, and by the way, these were the, the four. This particular site is very well merited for an economic development use. Um, this is a 382-acre site, 174 buildable acres. Through our study and our process, we gave it a 3.6 in terms of its GPA. Third site is a smaller site. This is one of the potential intermodal logistics center sites, the ILC site at, uh, at the Interstate 10. And ultimately, uh, this site is scored a 3.4. Right across the interstate is the fourth site. Uh, it's a 98-acre site with 70, around about 77 acres of buildable area, scoring a 3.4. These rail serve sites, and most of these sites are intended for a light industrial use. We're not looking at heavy industrial manufacturing for these types of projects. Um, manufacturing assembly, commercial freight logistics are the types of projects that we, we envision would be highest and best use on these properties. You look at the tail of the tape, all four sites received favorable engineering and environmental reviews from our study from the SSI Phase II. Uh, they, both, they all have excellent transportation access, good large contiguous buildable areas to support uh, a development with, with um, relatively, relative to commercial and industrial activity, low cost for site prep. Uh, we've, we've limited this to no, limited or no wetlands impacts on these sites, as well as uh, limited to no flood risk on these sites. Where there's some room for improvement, utilities access, uh, in some cases where we need extension of services, broadband availability, but that's everywhere. That's not just here. That's, that's pretty much common in a lot of, uh, across rural Florida and a lot of states as well. I know you know about that. And then slope, uh, in this part of North Florida, you have some terrain issues, uh, but it's not insurmountable. 
Uh, just as, I'll, I'll cut through these because you can't see them at this, uh, on this monitor. It's some of the site maps that we produce. Last slide, uh, what are the next steps? Where do we go from here? Uh, continuing to make sure that the landowner engagement is solidified. Typically, we look to see the county hold a purchase, real estate purchase option agreement. That in the Florida is different from my home state, Louisiana. So the rules and regulations that apply there will have to be explored. But ultimately, control of that property is very important to a company coming in. They need to know that you have an agreed upon set price and that property is available. Uh, it just helps to minimize their uncertainty in the process. It's very, very important. Site branding and marketing I mentioned in terms of getting uh, site materials done, site flyers, conceptual site plans, what it could potentially look like for this type of manufacturing operation. Um, it's very important to develop those materials. We do site visits where we conduct drone flights to get video where you can have a virtual tour of these properties that goes to uh, not only additional um, uh, survey of these properties, but also for marketing purposes. Uh, nothing beats being able to visualize and see these sites uh, in, almost in, in real time. And then uh, down the road, some of these sites may warrant, some not, formal due diligence, as I mentioned, the boots on the ground part. The last piece, and this is something that you've already been to some degree discussing earlier, we talk about land use. Uh, some of these sites are properly zoned. I say properly, they're zoned for the intended use as we see it for an economic development use. Some are not, which would warrant a comprehensive land use amendment. It's not a trivial process and it takes time. The main thing to know is that companies have a lot of choices when they're looking at locations and you're not the only game in town. And the prospect of a six month process to rezone a piece of property that may or may not go the way that you intend you just don't have serious projects that can afford to wait that long. So we, bless you, we, 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 I learned in Florida it's unique to have a state governed process that requires counties through their comprehensive land use planning to go through the land use amendment application process. And in working with DEO who understands what we're doing, obviously they're supporting it with funding. Uh, they have an expedited process for land use amendments uh, that could take upwards of six months. And then you have to have your own internal meetings. Uh, yeah, at least two, I think, or, or maybe how that works. But you can't have a prospect, again, either sitting in with the debate on whether or not a site needs to be rezoned or just waiting for that, uh, that timetable to happen. So we, we advocate uh, that you, you make the commitment to help get these sites rezoned at the appropriate time so that you can push them forward knowing that you don't have that as an obstacle. So with that, I know it's quick. I understand that. But in, in the essence of time, I wanted to give you an overview of what we're doing with the strategic sites inventory program. This is gonna have, uh, I use the term, it's not if, but when someone locates on these properties, it's gonna produce quality jobs. Florida has a tremendous amount of resources. Uh, and I think in the market, the economy, all the things we're seeing. But again, if you don't have dirt, a good quality piece of dirt to put somebody, then really nothing else matters in your, in your efforts to attract uh, projects. Be happy to entertain any questions that you may have. Right, thank you. Do you have any questions? For him. I just have one question. Yes, sir. Um, I don't know how long this process has been in, but I was looking at your phase one dots on your map, and it was interesting. Did you have one down in Lafayette County on the uh, Suwannee River for phase one? That was There was a blue dot down there. I could have sworn <laughs> I saw it. I, I'd be interested in how that one got on there, but nowhere in the southern half of the of the. That's right. Uh, county there was any other places that could, could be it. we're putting solar farms down there yeah <laughs> no 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 go back to the next slide, slide before that uh look right down there on the so <laughs> it's the swanee river this all these blue dot all these blue that dots through phase yeah. one yeah you're right right <laughs> when you when you look at this so we consult through phase two we look at uh in particular we have the um uh through the through federal ipac data as well as the F&I Florida uh, Biodiversity Matrix, and we look at also all the protected lands, the environmentally protected lands, uh, federally protected lands, and a lot of these get ruled out for that purpose. And Suwannee County in particular, and the Suwannee River, that entire reach of that river is protected. And so ultimately in the beginning, this is done based on your just proximity to infrastructure and soil types and things like that on a high level. But what happens is as we go through phase two, these will drop out significantly. So the funnel's wide at the top. We had some, uh, last count it was over 1,300 potential pieces of property in 
59 of 67 counties in Florida that were potential sites through phase one. But knowing that we have to have tight constraints on ecological and environmental concerns, yeah. those are going to continue to narrow. Then you put the landowners into the equation, it continues to narrow. So we feel like having 1,300 some odd potential sites is a good starting point to whittle that down to sites that are going to be practically pursuable, which will not be in the hundreds, but probably in the tens. Well, related to that question would be the I-75 interchange. I'm just wondering why that, none of those showed up in there either in the phase two. I would have thought that that would have been moved a little, but it could have been because your process began before we started uh, uh, really working on the infrastructure out there. But I, I was just curious about that one as well. Or maybe it's the wrong type of, um, of we're, we're looking at a totally different type of business uh, development. We were, we were, again, Jeff Bender, we were the party, we were in partnership. We were able to secure funding basically to take our whole region through phase one, which is identify those parcels. Phase two takes additional funding. Now, I want to compliment Swanee County for you know, stepping up to the plate and going. I mean, we've got more phase two sites in this county than we do have any other because that's really incumbent on them working with us to apply for additional dollars. It takes additional dollars to do the phase two. Okay. And so, um, you know, looking at Swanee's got, uh, I think, four sites. I think Columbia County, we did two or three already. Um, but again, this is kind of an iterative process where we've got to do additional pursue additional dollars to do those phase two studies, not to mention phase three and four. But again, I don't want to, I do want to compliment Jimmy. I mean, I think, and Shannon as well, when pursuing those dollars through DEO, because there is money available to do those phase two studies. And at the end of the day, that's the only way we can call the great site discovery phase one into those projects that really have a real opportunity to bring a project. Thank you. I, th I think the other answer to your question too is it was the amount of the grant dollars we had to look at our our Narrow. most likely sites to develop yeah. and I mean there was more sites that we had originally selected that That's we were right. going to oh, submit yeah. to him yeah, yes. but the grant dollars ran out a lot sooner than the sites ran out mm -hmm. thank you yeah it's certainly no indication that these are the, the these are the only four sites of value we have several it's just to that point, it was right. about prioritization of what you right. had to work and, on. And with so many areas around the interchanges that we've been yep. working on, those are all obvious cho choices. And we just, yep. I mean, we would love to have done on as many sites as possible. With, and, and we did with the funding we had. And a big factor was knowing that these sites, the landowners were, were had these sites available to, to sell or lease. That's Well, that was that's the everything. other thing. Once you identified a site, right. you had to make sure it was available. Because I can tell you, Shannon and I went mm -hmm. round and round and round for a couple months trying to narrow it down and then Jimmy come on board and it was same thing you know we'd find yeah. a site that would meet everything and then one thing would kick it out and we'd go to a different site so I'll just say if you did quick and dirty math for me we had four each county in our region had four sites that's 56 imagine us marking an inventory of 56 sites for our region well you said county, yep yeah and we consider these sites to be nationally competitive. What does that mean? They're good pieces of property in counties, but they might be good for a local company to expand if they run out of room. Um, would they attract a major project that's looking at South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama? Yeah, you know, I don't know. These sites would. I consider these sites to be nationally competitive sites. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I had one question. Um, how, do, how do our scores compare to our neighbors? I would say that based on NFEDP's membership area, they're pretty much, you're, you're on a, a pretty even playing field right now. Um, prior to having this study done, the, the answer was I don't know because we hadn't put, now, granted, you, the sites we identify through phase one on face value have merit. But now that we've quantified it through phase two, then I can answer the question and saying that they're looking pretty good. I'd probably put these sites in the, the upper 85% of sites that we've looked at in terms of quality. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Thank you. Um, with your with your job, if you were handling these sites, what would be your next move with them to get them out in front of the world for us? I mean, what what do we look to do from here? Right. The the first thing I would do 
is on the landowner and get the landowner engagement side of things is to firm up a real estate purchase option agreement and again I have no, I can't put, provide any guidance because I don't know how that works in Florida I, I understand but that. lock we, it up and I would do it for a minimum of one year uh, it's always going to be a first right or refusal type thing but nonetheless the main thing is you're locking the price in right now the landowners uh, and obviously this is about being competitive we have other options in Swanee County this these aren't the only sites so you've got you've, there has to be an understanding that these need to be at I know this is I'm gonna throw out a general term fair market value but there's data to suggest based on other types of projects going in what the the average cost per acre needs to look like if you get out too far outside of that you're defeating everything we're doing if you're just not cost effective on land now that's the landowner's prerogative right the next thing I would do is I would immediately start the process for the land use amendment for sites that are not currently zoned for uh, either um, an industrial or employment center um, I would look at making sure that you have the alignment with the zoning the future land use and go through that process because it takes time and you can you can do all everything else while that's on that track right. you can begin to do the other things um, I would recommend again a site visit capturing some information um, with respect to the site visit documentation photos we want to build a package of marketing material for these sites as well as some conceptual site designs even though we don't have an, an applicant or a tenant or a project so to speak we know what generally these where, where the access points are we can get some general footprints of, of what a couple of different options when you can visualize that that goes so long in a prospects mind to be able to see what their potential facility would look like if you want to take it a step further uh, you have many communities have spent uh, dollars on getting videos produced that are it, the, the entirety of Swanee County as a community but then focusing in on that site and it's a, basically it's a we don't do this but it's a production video that showcases this particular piece of property um, but I would say that the, the landowner engagement component the zoning component and the marketing materials is where I would go next and uh, and then just begin the process of blasting the site consultant community with this information because I wouldn't be embarrassed to waste their time I'd be proud to, to, to give them something that goes in their top shirt pocket they may not need have a project in mind right now for some of these sites but knowing the quality and not just that everybody makes claims about quality but that's opinion we have facts to back up the fact that these sites are quality sites and it's time and money with site consultants like everything else they know that they get something that's ready to go that they can back up their competitive claims they'll stick it in front of a prospects nose quick as long as you're in the market vicinity of where they need to be Any other questions for him? The only other one I have is the work that you've done to date. Is there a is there a time stamp on it? Is it good for two years, three years? Is it something that'll just kind of stick with the property? Um, yeah, that that's a great question, and it goes back to zoning. Not do you, you don't only want to get the prop the site itself properly zoned, but you know please take into consideration pr protecting that property by zoning around it so that you don't have an incompatible use back up to that site even though you don't lose the site to another development you could have something back up that just perception or otherwise could render it you know really a concern or a liability so I would say that the you have to judge that based on the pace of how things happen in Swanee County which are going to be different than Leon County and certainly other places in Florida but I would say that at a minimum I'd call this a good you know year to two year just in a general rule of thumb in, in rural Florida a year to two year type time frame before something significantly changes some cases things change that open up property you talk right. about riding a road that all of a sudden now geographically you've got sites that didn't have good transportation access now we want to look at those again but the zoning is is probably the the biggest thing that would lend to the, t the shelf life of this so bar no zoning changes or uh, different uses coming in that make it not usable there's really not a time span there isn't in. I mean we kind of are in control of whether it is still good or not good right population expansion growth if you know if you back up residential to it you know school transportation routes anything like that would change it but if it stays static then I don't I don't think there is a shelf life all right well thank you any other questions yeah I have one like you said we had the data to back it up now uh, and obviously you work with Mr. Norris and mm -hmm. Mr. Gamble and some others but if we had if Mr. Norris had a company that was looking to come in here uh, are you there for us still to, to have conversation 
with someone and to show the research that you've gathered? Is that we do. That's I mean, and that's my job. That's what I do. We don't just throw stuff over the fence. I mean, it may be cliche, but we always talk about trying to be there from identifying a piece of property to a ribbon cutting. And so absolutely, I've been doing this. I'm from Louisiana, born and raised, started this process in our home state. Florida was the first state that I expanded out to, really because Louisiana doesn't compete with Florida for a lot of projects. It's just different economies and different worlds. And I did that on purpose. And Duke Energy is the one that really started this program with funding here. That was back in when we first started was in late 2012, early 2013. And here it is 2019. And I've been in, in 59 of 67 counties and um, so absolutely, we want to be here to support y'all in any way we can. Okay. You need to add anything, Mr. Norris? Anything else? No, no. I don't think so. Well, we appreciate your time. Appreciate yeah. the hard work. Appreciate having me. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate it. I do want to follow up real quick because uh, we do have um, Mr. Jeff Hendry with us, and uh, he kind of surprised me today. He uh, showed up. I didn't know he was coming, but that's because he's buying well, dinner. He's here. We'll let him talk. Yeah, So, uh, but I do want to bring him up real quick because he did want to update the commissioners real quick on a couple things that he has going with NFEDP. And I do really want to thank Victor again because he's worked long and hard on that, and, and uh, he's talked to Shannon and I a million times about these pieces of properties and what we have and what we don't have and what we need to do. So uh, I really do appreciate all it, his hard work. One, one quick, is there a phase after this, or was this kind of – the phase, the final. Oh. What the sh the short answer is yes, but right now, Mr. Norris has what he needs in these reports to market these sites okay. because we know they're on the market. So he can use what he has right now. But I'd recommend again going through with the phase three of the landowner engagement and then beginning what we consider to be phase five. Again, not chronological in the the marketing materials. I would not recommend boots on the ground yet. Because this site may not, these sites may not last that long. If you attract a prospect, they're going to do their own homework anyway, no matter how much you do. They have their own engineering firms and all to do that. So that's something you could reserve for later uh, that could add value if the sites don't move. But I would, I would maybe put that off to the, you know, to the future. Thank and, you. I, and I want to thank, again, I can't do this. The reason we, this desktop, there's only so much I can do sitting behind a computer. Um, and so obviously we have to consult uh, with, with uh, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Norris, because they're the ones, this is in their backyard, they're familiar with this property. But let me just say this, we've done 40 sites across, well, 35 sites across the state of Florida and then in several other states. But to have this level, we have questionnaires that we send out, they're detailed, they're several pages long it's over each site. Uh, Mr. Jimmy sent it back to me and every blank had something in it. If he didn't know, he found out. I don't get that in a lot of other places. So I just want to say thank you for doing that because it makes our job easier instead of having to go pull teeth from a chicken, which is what it's usually like. So anyway, thank you. This will be the most brief you've had at least tonight. Um, two things. One is I want to let you all know, uh, and this is important, especially elected officials if you can, uh, certainly staff. I know Jimmy's already registered. We do an Economic Development 101 course. It's a, you know, it's a one-day thing, and uh, I think it's tremendously valuable. Actually, we have a site consultant that leads that uh, Economic Development Academy, we call it. We're doing one on September 12th. It's going to be in Chiefland. Then we've got one on uh, September 27th that's going to be in Lake City. So just encourage y'all. We'll market it through um, Jimmy, and I know he gets it to the commissioners. And, and, and any of your people that sit on uh, advisory boards or anything, we also have scholarships to underwrite the cost of that for y'all if you want to attend. The last thing I'll say, um, I've had this partnership with Victor since I think 2012 when I saw his initial presentation uh, with Duke Energy. Um, as y'all can see, it's a, it's a cumulative aggregate thing. I will tell you in probably in about six months on our website, we'll have every single site, uh, phase one and phase two that's gone through and have people that are visiting that website will be able to access the data, and I, by that I mean CEOs, companies, site selection consultants, but for people like Jimmy that might be responding to a request for proposal from a, a project consultant, he'll have all the data embedded in that. He'll be able to print out the maps. He'll be able to include a packet with that. So we're really trying to, to automate that for a lot of our EDOs, particularly in our rural counties, because they just don't have the internal um, capacity in many cases, whether it's resources, the GIS, or whatever, and that's what the regional organization does is we can leverage a lot of our counties together 
Um, I'd close by just telling you that, again, um, you know, where we've been since 2012, at least with this project, is pretty monumental in my mind. And I can tell you, North Florida, of all the three regions uh, that serve rural counties, um, might sound arrogant, but I can tell you we're leaps and bounds ahead of the others. And uh, we're making ourselves more competitive. And I think Suwannee County is a big microcosm of that because they've got the most phase two uh, sites already. So thank you all. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And uh, the reason I'm over here with him is I had jury summons today that got canceled. He picked me up for coming over from Baton Rouge, and now we're going to your brown lantern and spend some money. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Brown Lantern is going to be closed in a few minutes. Yeah, yeah I think they're not going to make it. <laughs> uh, next is staff reports. Mr. Scott, you got anything that's pressing for tonight? <laughs> well, the, the, the quick version. Just want to let you know we've wrapped up the uh, Heritage Park grant uh, for the new ball fields and pavilion and playground and such. The uh, new trail is completed and uh, being used and uh, wrapped up the Douglas Center grant um, and a dozen th other things. But the uh, football registrations be underway. Uh, Thank you. Twenty <laughs> second. Start the twenty second. Uh, you did. You said that. You said the trail was finished. There, even, even the last part we were talking about. Good. 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 Okay. Wonderful. Are you, any questions for Mr. Scott? I appreciate that. Uh, link uh, also, uh, three hundred fifty thousand dollars additional funding from the state for the fairgrounds. For the fairgrounds, yes. Nice. Nice. Thank you. That's what two years in a row you've slid that in. Oh well, three. Something like that. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, moving on to general business. Discuss with uh, item 15, discuss with possible board action, preliminary rate for fire protection assessment for 2019-20. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. There's no proposed change in the rate. Uh, the request is to go ahead and approve the preliminary rate of $100 on the fire. Mm -hmm. uh, do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve by Commissioner Fleming. Was that you, Mr. Richardson? Mm -hmm. Got a second by Commissioner Richardson. Any discussion? The, the other applicable rates would also still apply. I'm just pointing out the one that's most important to most people, and that's the, the household. Yes, sir. Any discussion? Hear none. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, item 16, discuss what possible board action, preliminary rate for solid waste assessment for 1920. Mr. Chairman, there's no proposal to change that. It'll continue to be $130 per household. That's the requested action for his approval of that uh, rate. Do I have a motion to approve? Make a motion. Is that you, Mr. Hale? Yes, sir. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Stapleton. Any discussion? Hear none. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. On item 17, discuss the possible board action fire service within the town of Brantford. Uh, a couple board meetings ago, uh, y'all gave myself, Mr. Summers, and Mr. Harris the authority to go to Brantford and discuss um, what we could do as far as providing the fire service. After looking at the numbers that it would cost us to provide it and uh, the revenue that would it would come in if the town of Brantford instituted a fire rate equal to the county, um, there was too big of a shortfall to provide any services with a facility located in the town. Uh, we, we presented them with an option of providing it at our current locations of Beachville and McAlpin, um, and we pretty much left it well, there. They, I'm pretty sure that they, had, from the options that we talked about, have decided to stay with their volunteer service um, they expressed some needs that they have in the meeting and made some requests, but I directed them in the meeting to contact Mr. Richardson to make those requests. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you for that lead in. Um, I was contacted by uh, uh, Councilman Herndon, Randy Herndon, um, who uh, advised me that they are building is being decertified uh, very, very soon, their fire department building and uh, they will be in need of um, finding a new place. And um, 
I don't know all the details about why it's decertified, but uh, we put your mic down just a little bit. We have, um, yeah, oh, gee whiz, that's better, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I find if I was having a hard time hearing you, everybody else was. Uh, they believe that uh, they can build a uh, building adequately, a adequate to house uh, two very large engines, which are um, receiving the biggest, uh, the greatest amount of attention right now because they've got, they can't get them in a in a building, and um, and their hoses are exposed to the to the sun and the elements and and those uh, they don't take long before they deteriorate and um, so they, they told me asked me if they could help with uh, some monies to available to build a building um, and we did a little bit of uh, research and feel like that we can get a uh, an adequate steel building out there for to meet their needs for a hundred thousand dollars or maybe even a little less than that um, and um, we just happened to have $100,000 available that was set aside for Branford already for land acquisition, parks and recreation for a piece of property that is now no longer available because um, it belongs to the state. So I am requesting that uh, we consider uh, however you want to do it and with whatever conditions you want to place on it, uh, just uh, changing that $100,000 over to uh, them to meet this immediate need and um, then we can just discuss the conditions by which uh, we're, we're doing it. I, I don't know if I've explained it well enough or not. Um, I tried. If you have any questions, ask. Try so um, does anyone have any questions for him? No. Uh, On the, uh, the, that's the money that we set aside several years ago for, or a couple years ago for the uh, just last year, uh, we was set it aside last year? for a piece of property on the Greenway, on the river. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I know they have a more immediate need now than than what the Greenway is. I know the Greenway is a a a good project, and but but it's a five to fifteen year project. Yes, it is. And this is an immediate need for them, and the money has already been set aside. I I don't have a problem if we um, reallocate it. For that need, but I would like to see us, you know, conditions. not just hand it over to them to I, put a, a, a not to exceed number of a, of the hundred thousand, and um, uh, let them go out and get the bids and come back and uh, us us meet that need up to. Mr. Chairman, I'd add a couple of things to it. Uh, number one, uh, the hundred thousand uh, dollars up to hundred thousand dollars, and but also uh, it is. Um, Evident that Branford's struggling with their uh, with their fire and EMS or fire protection in their city, and um, they have volunteers. and uh, I think our public safety director back there could speak to some of the difficulties with uh, uh, getting new volunteers. Eventually, I think we're going to, if you want my opinion, eventually we're going to be taking care of the fire protection in Branford. <coughs> but I. Th Having said that, I believe that if we build this building or we, we provide some monies for them to build this building, that we have a reversion clause in there that it comes back to us with the property for the use of fire protection. Fire no, protection I, only. I, I don't disagree with that at all. Um, I believe if, if we help fund it for the uh, volunteer fire department and at any time they quit using it for fire and we as a county start providing it, that... Uh, it would revert back to the county. Yeah, because for, if we ever had to put the fire department in Branford, and I'm sure at one point uh, with growth, we will probably have to look at it. This, this building is safe. Several, yes, yes sir. Several dollars. So the volunteer firemen there, there is the city of Branford, the town of Branford, the yes, town sir. of Branford. Yeah. Yes, sir. Their equipment, their people. Their mm -hmm. equipment, their people. Yeah, and, and this is the this is the main issue that sparked up the whole debate on whether for the county to provide the fire service there or to for them to continue to provide it but some of the issues that they ran into with the county fire providing it was if we did not locate within the town of Brantford our stations uh, put them without of the five mile range and I, I I can't remember but it was what? from our from our station right to on Brantford Highway to where you take the T 
five miles is directly in the middle of the intersection. You don't cover anything north. You don't cover anything south. So, right. And it's as road miles. It's not as a crow flies anymore. Yeah, they, so. they, they changed it now to road miles. Um, really? And so that's what sparked the initial conversation to get us to that, that point. But we looked at providing an ALS unit within the town of Brantford with, um, what was it, six, six full-time Six full employees. employees, two per shift. So yeah, and it was going to run us 500, 500 000. plus thousand. And the fire assessment brought in 67. 63, so it was a 67. And, you know, we just told them that there was no way that we could make the, that difference up to provide a station down there, especially within the north end slack and, uh, for a station. And they understood. Sure. Uh, Real yep. quick, uh, uh -huh. Chairman, uh, my recommendation is if, we, if we're going into a building and putting funds into a building with that intention in the future that we have some input of design because um, with the requirements that there will be that are in place for manning and staffing and things like that, there's some things that that building, we can put some pre-thought into it in the design. We don't have to put that, that type of stuff in that building right now but designed that it's easily obtained future. So right. it's going to cost us a lot less if those are our intentions it, later. If it comes back to you. Yeah, because it's going to require a firewall. It's going to require lots of other things that if we design it properly, uh, looking towards the future and we have to move into it, it's going to cost us a lot less because we're going to be ones with the burden of, of making the upgrades. So one of the things that we talked about as far as, as, far as facilities is, are concerned, um, some of their, their facilities that they have already uh, and where they're uh, looking at putting this proposed building uh, would allow them to utilize those facilities of the old town hall with uh, without having to put a whole lot into this building so there are I know there's certain requirements you're talking about that uh, would be uh, obviously important um, I think their biggest concern is is making sure they have a place they can get these trucks out of the weather so uh, basically their their requirements that they're trying to meet currently is they have to have out of the elements. They basically have a cover. They need to have heat. In yes, Florida, covered. it's not that big of a concern, but it's still a requirement. Right. right. So well, that's the what they're trying night. to meet. Covered, heated, and insulated. insulated. Yes. Um, was the three things. But no, um, I mean, you, you were there the other night. I, th I think having uh, Chief Summers in, in on the design discussions um, is not – it's not a bad thing, I, I, especially moving forward. If the case it does, I just want to make sure that we're we can save money in the future that Correct. we possibly can, because yeah. we'll have to take care of the cost of it. I I, I think that's good. I, I don't know what decision you need to make, but uh, I mean, as far as uh, action we need to take, but um, but if that's a condition upon that action, I'd make sure I put it in there. Yeah, um, if the board is willing to consider it, um, I think just the action you need is to. Uh, reallocate the funding and give uh two two things mr chairman yes I sir think. one is to do just that and i would ask the board just go ahead and vote to do that because that's a financial issue that we can take care of but yeah. if you follow up with another motion just authorize um, you guys mr Pravat, the chairman jamie and myself will work with them on putting an agreement together to bring back to this board um well, that would be two separate motions, and I'm I'm, I'm fine with it. I mean, with the money's was sitting there, it was already allocated for uh, pretty much the town and, and the park development. I don't have a problem moving over it to meet an immediate need. I, I move that we first of all reallocate the money so to them for that purpose. Um, I'm sorry, reallocate the money for that purpose. Second. Um, I got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Richardson. We got a second by Commissioner Fleming. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor. Oh, yes, sir. One real quick, quick question. We have our plans from Welburn. Those bays would be adequate. That's kind of the standard that we set for building we stations. On, we can work on that. That's so totally. i just putting that in as a comment. Okay, okay. So. All right. I got a motion by Commissioner Richardson and a second by Commissioner Fleming. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll move that we uh, give uh, uh, Mr. Ravat, yourself, and um, uh, Mr. Harris the uh, authority to go ahead and uh, work together with them to get an agreement so you can bring back to us for uh, consideration as well as they can give to them. They, and I will say this, uh, 
time is kind of of the essence on this thing simply because they're going to a workshop on the 29th this month. So if something can be put together that they can talk about a little bit during the workshop, well, I'm sure then I, we I can know. get back with. We can be there to at least workshop with them on the 29th. I, I think it shouldn't be a problem. I know it won't be for me. Okay. I think right. we can get a quick agreement put together. Yeah. The design input will be a separate matter, but we can make that happen wait a minute, as well. Wait a minute. There's two golf tournaments between now and then. <laughs> <laughs> that happened, I'll, put the agreement. I'll put the agreement together, Mr. Richardson. <laughs> and that agreement would include... It'll be one page if I do it. And obviously it would include the yeah. Mr. Summers being involved. Correct. Right. I got a motion by Commissioner Richardson. Do I have a second? Second. I'm having a hard time hearing Dan. Is that you? <laughs> that was me. You can't hear that deep voice. I'm trying to get closer to the mic. No, it's not that. My sinuses are clogged up, and I just can't hear good. There is some requirements to be the chairman. you got to be able to hear. Well, well y'all elected the wrong one for that. <laughs> Selective hearing. Yeah. That's, That's the, the problem we got. That's the truth right there. I got a motion of Commissioner Richard, second by Commissioner Hale. Any further discussion? Here, none. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right. Item 18. Discuss with possible board action any issues associated with the water or the wastewater plant. You got anything, Mr. Harris? No. All right. Item 19, uh, additional agenda items. Uh, yes. Yes. Bervat has one, and I have misplaced it. What do I do with it? Um, I'm drawing on it. Mr. Chairman, we have a couple of properties that we'd like for the board to consider declaring surplus that we no longer have a use for, and then authorize me to dispose of those following the direction of Fort Florida statute. Uh, any questions from the board or to Mr. Harris or Mr. Bravat? So just one motion or one on each one? Two? Well, we can one, start one motion one motion. Fine. motion. One, mo one motion. I'll make a motion. If it was earlier, we could do it in two motions. Yeah. It's pretty big <laughs> Not a motion to approve by Second. Commissioner Hill. Second by Commissioner Stapleton. Any further discussion? Hear none. All in favor say aye. Aye. I'll throw the same sign. All right. Moving on to item 20, public concerns, comments. Anyone wishing to speak, that make their way to the podium. Name, address for the record. Nobody. Well, being none, move on to administrator comments. Mr. Harris, do you have anything for us? No, sir. Wow. Board members request. Start with you, Ms. Hale. Uh, the only thing I have, I did want to give an update because I didn't at the last meeting on the River Task Force. We met with uh, the city of Valdosta. Mr. Norris was with me. I appreciate him going. Uh, and if I forget anything, step up and speak up. <laughs> uh, they are working diligently to fix the problem. Uh, they're being held up on permitting through the state of Georgia right now and building their uh, last tank, I hope, would be the last one. It's like 8 million gallons. Is that what I said? 8 to 10 million? 8 to 10 million gallons. Uh, but they've done a, a massive amount of storm drain repair, and that's going to continue on for another 10 years. Uh, but they recognized and tried to identify the problem areas and, and attack those first. Um, but that's really it. I mean, we're just... I will say this, they're going to meet with us. The city of Valdosta is going to meet with the uh, River Task Force uh, in September, somewhere here in Florida. That place hasn't been picked yet, but I'm trying to get them here at Swanee County. Uh, so if that happens, I'll definitely let everyone know moving forward with that. But anything else? J Although I did find out Jimmy knows the mayor real good up there. He probably could have helped us with this a long time ago, but thanks for speaking up. Yeah. Uh That, that, that's true. They didn't have this before in the other spills. They now have a, a station, if you will, where they can have, they have their own trucks, what, three trucks of their own, plus other local, I'll say, septic uh, companies, that if it starts to over flood, they can pump them into those trucks and move them somewhere else, move that waste somewhere else. Um, and I think they said they have now the capability of releasing where they didn't before upwards of 15 million gallons daily now um, to also try to catch that overspill uh, and to eliminate that problem that they couldn't do before. So, wow. yeah. 
they're working on. I think what do you say the total budget is going to be a hundred million dollars when it's said and done? Yeah. Yep. I'm looking at these people and they say your time's up. I'm done. Thank you. Uh, just a couple quick things. Uh, in all seriousness, I want everybody to keep Commissioner Hale's family in, in their prayers. His father-in-law's fighting a strong fight here, and we thinking about you and Big praying for y'all. Appreciate and, uh, it. And just keep them in your thoughts. Also, uh, two things for Commissioner Richardson. I'd just like to say I uh, appreciate you stepping up tonight and giving us a little time to look on this solar farm issue. And also, I'd like to commend you on uh, – getting creative with shortfall of funds down there and figuring out how to help fire rescue. Good deal. Appreciate you. Thank you. Mr. Richardson. Um, I'd like to thank every one of you for being so patient <laughs> with us, uh, asking a lot of questions. And um, I also like to thank the board to, for uh, allowing me to be creative with that fund, with those funds, because uh, I know it is immediate need. They, they know that this is still a short meeting compared to what a lot of them used to sit through. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I understand that. Yeah, yeah. Everyone so thank you anyway. Yes. Uh, Mr. Fleming? I don't have anything much, Mr. Chairman. I just want to thank Ms. Gabrielle. Uh, on July the 4th, they had the, uh, the fireworks and, and the uh, presentations down at downtown. And uh, her and Chief William, they, they gave the Board of County Commissioners recognition. And uh, they did bring me up on the stage. I want to say thank you. Uh, one thing I, I, I see that the, the lighting that you all had down there has been taken up. I think the lights look look good, but they're gone now. Okay, thank you. The uh, uh, only thing I have was um, just, for, I'm sure everybody knows, but if you don't, uh, North Florida College uh, ribbon cutting was the other day, and they opened, and I thought, uh, Looking forward to their success. I think they're going to be a great asset to Swanee County. And I just hats off to the board, the chamber, and the city, and North Florida for everybody to work to bring that together. And uh, that everything we do affects people's lives, people's lives. But um, education has uh, the real ability to change your life and to bring it so close to home for some that aren't fortunate enough to be able to drive 30 miles one way every day, um, it, it could make a, a huge difference in their lives. So uh, thank everybody for working hard on that. I don't have anything else. All we need is a motion to adjourn. Motion. Any second? second? All in favor say aye. Aye.